Um, our next uh, speaker is Erica Niwa. She's an assistant professor in psychology from Brooklyn College. Erica, come on up. Okay, hi everybody. Um, you'll be seeing some images behind me of uh, the young people in our programs. Um, so I wanted to kind of start first by saying I'm one, I've heard a lot of um, connecting points with these speakers before, um, especially kind of being somebody who is in the spaces between, um, an interdisciplinary person who thinks about questions that kind of reside in the spaces between disciplines, between spaces, um, and it's also in those spaces between where the relationships are built that a lot of the people are speaking about here, relationships with funders, relationships with community, relationships with each other. Um, relationships to our work and the products that we create. Um, so I think the first kind of most important point um, when I think about the storytelling um, that Edith has asked us to do is, um, is I guess, a call to action. And the call to action is um, to listen to and face um, that part of yourself that, um, even when you're terrified by it, um, is imagining. Um, the kind of restless imagining and reimagining of, um, of how things could be, how things should be, how things might be, um, and that that's a good place to start with looking for funding and for building partnerships. Um, I am an assistant professor in the Department of Psychology at Brooklyn College. I'm also uh, dual affiliated with the Children and Youth Studies program there. Um, so I kind of, again, reside in spaces that are both behavioral sciences as well as humanities and social sciences. Um, and I'm the faculty director of the Brooklyn College Community Partnership. Um, I come from a background like Sonia of, um, of community-based and community-engaged work and youth work. Um, I ran youth programming for many, many years before going back to graduate school. Um, and so the places I feel most comfortable are in and with people. Um, and that's why also kind of being in, in, the, in academic spaces are both wonderful when I'm with people, but also can be lonely when I'm not. Um, so uh, just as kind of a background, um, the story for the Brooklyn College Community Partnership actually started more than 25 years ago, long before I was there, and long before I was a part of that story. And the story started with the death of Yusuf Hawkins, um, uh, uh, who was a 16-year-old um, black boy who was killed um, uh, in Brooklyn. And unfortunately, it's a story that um, was a, an incredibly um, catalyzing moment in a larger story that is ongoing, as we know, um, that is around us everywhere in the spaces that we move through, in the classes, classrooms we move through, in our, on our blocks, in our neighborhoods, in our city, in this country. Um, and it was that moment that another professor, Nancy Romer, who f was from the Department of Psychology at Brooklyn College, um, decided that it, was, um, it wasn't enough um, to worry or to wring hands or to talk about it in a classroom, but to do something. Um, and, and that the space that she could do something in was the space at Brooklyn College. Um, and so she started to imagine getting and then was able to get small grants at first to start to think about creating spaces that were academic, um, learning spaces that also bridged between um, Brooklyn College and the spaces beyond it within Brooklyn. Um, she started just with very small grants um, that were city-based grants and local grants um, to start with projects that were community-based projects with young people and to start conversations. Um, that has grown drastically and vastly. I became the faculty director in um, 2016. Um, we, uh, we provide um, free after-school programming from middle and high school students across Brooklyn to approximately 1,000 young people every year. Our operating budget ranges per year. Um, as everybody knows, sometimes funding is there and sometimes the mechanisms change and you have to get creative and find new ways to get it funded. Um, but uh, on average, we have around, our annual budgets are around 1.2 or $1.3 million a year in funding. Um, we, uh, we run after-school programs in um, seven different sites with young people. Um, in addition, I teach a paired course that is a field-based, kind of community-engaged uh, uh, course in which Brooklyn College undergraduates are um, placed within those programs, so they actually act as both um, 
as a teacher learners um, within spaces with young people in those spaces. Um, uh, we have seven full-time staff and about almost 40 part-time staff, many of whom are um, students or former students from within Brooklyn College, both at the undergraduate and graduate level. Um, uh, and one of the things, too, that, um, that is uh, interesting and terrifying and wonderful about entering into this new space and kind of trying to imagine this funding is really trying to both build upon and see kind of where have we been, where are we now, but also where are we going? And that's where the imagination and reimagination, the kind of reimagining comes in. Um, and uh, as many of you know, lots of funding streams have changed a lot in terms of how they function, who, what gets, what gets funded, the you know what topics are most sexy at that moment and what are not, um, uh, and so the kind of new um, transition that we're making is towards reimagining kind of what I'm calling a, a radical incubator for imagining that you know I'm a tenure track junior faculty member, um, and so as I'm on the tenure track there, we're always told there are three legs to the stool of getting tenure. It's research and it's service and it's education, but, the, but you never actually, you're talking about the three legs, but you never actually talk about where you're seated, right? The where they connect. Um, you just talk about these things as if they exist in separate spheres. Um, and for somebody who is, who comes from a space of being a person who works in community and with community, it doesn't make a lot of intuitive sense to me. Um, uh, and oftentimes it's placed against a long history of not only um, injustice and inequity, uh, but also in terms of research, um, especially in psychology um, and developmental psychology, which I'm a developmental psychologist, um, by training, uh, there is often the silencing and the um, sometimes purpose, uh, sometimes not seen but quite purposeful exclusion of the voices of those who are actually a part of or kind of being studied or being objectified through the process. And so our newest phase is to kind of try to reimagine creating even more, we have these kinds of service and education spaces, but now we're reimagining how research is a part of that. Um, so uh, we also have, um, I have a, doc a wonderful doctoral student here at the grad student who has, um, who has joined the project, as well as a range of um, undergrads and master's students who are taking part in what we're calling not just community engaged learning, but community engaged research. Um, and uh, we don't say based because it's not just that we're located there, it's that we're in kind of the the messy and wonderful and sometimes uncomfortable process of actually sitting and talking to each other. Um, uh, and uh, so I guess, I'm trying, how am I doing on time? I'm good, okay. Um, so a few things that I think that are uh, really helpful as we seek funding and sometimes we're successful, sometimes we're not. Um, the first thing is that, um, as was just said right before me, Building personal relationships with funders, with program officers is critical. Um, not only because it's really hard to know what they want unless you ask them, um, but also because sometimes when new funding mechanisms come down the pipeline, you want them to think, I know a person who, or an organization, or a group of people, or a collaborative people, um, of people who might really fit the bill, right? Um, so that happens as well. Um, uh, the second thing is um, uh, to kind of be guided, even with very different, uh, I don't like the word stakeholders because it sounds so corporate, but with very different um, people in all different spaces and um, with all different levels of, and types of, not levels, rather types of expertise, um, that one of the really important things to, to also do um, is to, uh, is to, is to be guided by a kind of core set of um, principles or commitments. And so for us, those, some of those core commitments that, that really drive us, to, regardless of, you know, we run arts programming and kind of the intersections of, of STEM and arts. We, have make, we do maker lab spaces and robotics, but we also do kind of stagecraft and other amazing work with our, with our young people. Um, uh, but one of the really important things when we do that um, is uh, taking the time to really um, articulate and um, 
describe and name our commitments to each other, um, and that's particularly important in community partnership, um, but our commitments to each other and our commitments to where we hope we're going and where we want to go together. And for us, that includes things um, to be kind of specific, like um, we have a core commitment that we believe that young people are active agents in their own lives and in the lives of their communities and the world around them. Right? Sounds like a base, very kind of basic idea. It's not really held always by everybody. Um, it's, it's usually like when I, uh, when I first told my grandmother that I was going to get my uh, PhD and that I wanted to work with 13-year-olds, the, the look on her face of sheer horror um, helped to kind of drive that point home. Um, uh, other, uh, other parts of that commitment are things like that not only are young people active agents in their own lives and in the lives of their communities and worlds around them, but that they are also experts um, and, uh, in their own lives and their own experiences and that there's a lot to learn from, um, uh, from them as well. Um, the second is that relationships matter, um, genuine, real relationships. Um, it is very, very hard to, and painstaking to build partnerships. Um, and they also, you don't just kind of, anybody who's married or has ever been married knows, right? It's not like you just like you get married and you're in the relationship and that's all you do. It takes a lot of active, hard work to continue to engage um, and to, to kind of be in relationship with each other. Um, other um, kind of commitments that we have and that are really important are that the context matters, the world around us matters, um, it shapes the funding mechanisms, it shapes how we apply, it also shapes how we might imagine the work that we're doing. Um, and uh, I'm trying to think of, and we have, I mean, I'll, I can talk more at length when we're sitting in the panel about the different types of funding. We have funding from um, local city and state funders, um, from the Department of Education, we from private funders, from corporations as well, very remotely, but mostly from private foundations as well. Um, but it is a constant hustle. And the constant hustle also means that it's good to not be on your own, um, that you can't be in a million places at once, no matter how hard you try. Um, and that other people also have lots of really important things to contribute to that, to that process of relationship building. Um, and so I guess, the last kind of take home that I hope, um, that I hope, other than seeing the beautiful faces and artwork and um, spaces that our young people have created in, in community and with each other, um, is to kind of uh, reconnect to, even though there's a lot of deadlines and federal grants in particular are terrifying in that way, um, but to reconnect to what is it that makes you, um, to the joy, to the imagination of kind of why and how you imagine that things could be different, um, and, and then the seeking of the relationships to make that joy into something tangible. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs>